Oh look, we're on Mars, kind of. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and normally I like to start these updates with some kind of a new strange picture coming from the surface of the red planet. And normally it's a picture of some strange rock. Here is the rock of the day. A rock that seems to contain almost like spine-like structures. Now obviously this could be a sign of past life, but right now the scientist who posted this, Natalie Cabral, believes that this is most likely the signs of an unusual type of erosion that caused certain types of ripples inside the rock to eventually erode due to various interactions with the Martian wind. Although of all possible rocks found here, this is definitely the one we should be collecting samples from. I don't think it's going to be happening just yet, but hopefully in the future. And so in this video, we're going to be discussing some of these recent updates coming from the red planet, some of them somewhat unusual and intriguing, some somewhat difficult to explain, but also some potentially heartbreaking as well. But let's really start with the biggest discovery, the one in regards to the rotation of planet Mars. Something really strange was recently discovered that nobody expected. Something that's coming from the older data from the now cancelled InSight mission. This mission was absolutely incredible for measuring extremely accurate observations coming from within Mars, and during its time on Mars was able to discover a lot of really cool things about the Martian structure. Here, by listening to various Mars quakes, over time it was able to discover the overall internal structure of the red planet. We've actually discussed some of these discoveries something like a year ago, and you can find that video in the description, with one surprise being the Martian core, which seems to be actually bigger and potentially somewhat one-sided, but the most recent surprise discovery was actually a result of data transmission that happened over several years. During its time on Mars, InSight mission was obviously busy transmitting all of this data back to Earth. And during the radio communication between InSight and the Deep Space Network here on Earth, a lot of these radio signals allowed scientists to search for tiny variations of frequency as the signals were transmitted from Mars. And turns out, some of these signals were slightly shifted in frequency. This is the concept known as the redshift and the blue shift. But the only reason this was happening was because of the rotation of Mars. It just, the actual frequencies were not always the same. They changed a little bit over the period of about 900 Martian days, which implied a tiny acceleration on the Martian surface. Or just to rephrase this, Martian rotation was increasing in speed. It seemed to be spinning slightly faster than the first signals from just a few years back. But the actual amount is of course minuscule approximately 4 milli arc seconds every year. So basically the Martian day here is shortened by a fraction of a millisecond. Something that we know happens on Earth as well. But our planet has an obvious culprit, the Moon. And apart from the Moon, even the distribution of water on the surface, including the ice caps, tend to influence the rotation just a little bit. But what exactly is doing this to Mars? Mars doesn't have oceans, and Mars doesn't have powerful moons which is essentially this new mystery from the red planet. What is causing the acceleration over time? There is obviously no definitive answer just yet, but at the moment, scientists believe that it's probably because of the polar ice caps, which do have similar effects on planet Earth. Alternatively, it's maybe because of something inside Mars, such as the interaction of mantle with the inner core. And because it's already been discovered that the core here doesn't have density distributed equally, Maybe there is an unusual motion inside Mars that Earth does not have. Anyway, it's basically a new mystery. No answer just yet. You can read more about this in a paper in the description. Here's another really strange picture from the surface of Mars. This time, it's not a rock, but instead this is signs of ancient volcanism. And the thing about Mars is that it does have a tremendous number of very unusual, very strange volcanoes. Now, this particular formation is very close to one of the larger volcanoes known as the Ascraeus Mons, the most prominent of several volcanoes in the Tarsus region. And this little guy measures at approximately 18 kilometers in height. But what's really strange about the volcano is that patch of collapsed terrain that looks like snakes. Now these are really large snakes, approximately 70 kilometers across. But in a nutshell these are lava tubes and various types of fissures that we often see on Earth as well. But these particular structures are also probably formed as a result of a collapse. But what exactly caused the collapse is obviously unknown. 
Nevertheless, there are quite a lot of these structures around this volcano, with the entire area around the volcano containing these unusual snake-like formations. Now obviously we don't have anything like this on planet Earth, and so the actual origin story here is going to be unknown for a very long time, but this seems to be pretty common on Mars. But when it comes to volcanoes, a much more interesting discovery comes from the biggest volcano in the entire solar system. Actually, this is the biggest mountain in the solar system, the famous Olympus Mons, 25 kilometers in height and comparable in size to the country of Poland, much, much bigger than anything on Earth. And there was actually a really impressive study released not so long ago that suggested that unusual formations surrounding Olympus Mons were very likely formed by lava interacting with liquid water. In essence, suggesting that this was not just the largest volcano in the solar system, this was the largest island volcano. And it's really the observations from the edges of the volcano that implied there was interaction with water. If correct though, all this would be happening billions of years ago, possibly at least three and a half billion years ago. This is a really ancient volcano. But it basically suggests that Mars back then most likely possessed an ocean that was at least one and a half kilometers in depth, possibly even deeper depending on the location. Although trying to figure out exactly what happened here and trying to actually see if these rocks were formed in liquid water would require an on-site geological investigation. That's probably not happening anytime soon. We also had some unusual pictures of different craters. Mars is also very famous for so many different strange craters on the surface that stayed here for billions of years. This one here looks like a foot, but it was essentially formed because of an asteroid that most likely collided with Mars at a large angle. Here's another one that probably was created in a very similar way. Now there are quite a lot of these unusual craters on Mars, but what's even stranger is actually the result of these collisions that we then discover on planet Earth. As we've discussed in a lot of previous videos, quite a lot of meteorites that we discover on our own planet seem to come from Mars. This is the famous meteorite known as the Black Beauty. And the question has always been, why so many? Is Mars just really good at losing rocks over time? And so to work this out, scientists actually performed a really intriguing experiment. They took a bunch of rocks similar to Martian rocks and shot them out of a powerful blast gun simulating impacts on Mars. And the main goal was really simple. Try to create rocks similar to Martian asteroids and try to figure out what kind of an impact could potentially create them. With the main result being that apparently you don't need a powerful asteroid to suddenly eject a lot of Martian rocks from the surface with similar structures to what we find on planet Earth, suggesting that even ejection from small impacts is most likely extremely common. Or basically that the red planet is just really good at losing rocks from the surface every time any impact occurs, possibly due to low atmosphere and possibly due to low gravity. But the fact that they actually used an experiment to show this is already quite impressive. And speaking of rocks, we also have some really cool pictures from Perseverance that recently captured this beautiful shot while also collecting some samples of a very strange area with distinctly colored rocks. And here the only explanation is that these are rocks that were moved by an ancient river and possibly a fast moving ancient river that was able to deposit these rocks in a certain way. In other words, it's an indirect sign that the water used to flow here a long time ago. But at the same time, while Perseverance was collecting samples, one of the geochemical experiments using instrument known as Sherlock discovered unusual signs of very complex organic molecules, with a study in a description describing this in more detail. But discovering organic molecules on the surface is not really a big deal. There are quite a lot of natural geological processes that can generally create organic molecules as well. The mystery here was actually in regards to something else. First, a lot of these molecules seem to be linked to various aquatic processes, or basically liquid water. But second, many of these diverse aromatic molecules seem to actually persist on the surface of Mars even though technically they should be destroyed. This planet is not very hospitable to complex chemistry because of the interaction with various cosmic radiation and even emissions from the sun. Yet somehow these organic molecules are still able to survive on the surface. And so in that sense, it could actually be, maybe, the sign of potential life. Either life that existed here not so long ago, or maybe even a life that still exists here today. Now we'll actually be discussing this particular topic in a separate video in more detail, but at least for now this is a really intriguing discovery. In essence, it indicates that for some reason, 
Quite a lot of complex organic molecules exist on the surface and survive despite difficult conditions, either because they're being replenished by something or for other reasons we don't understand. But as I mentioned, this mission has already collected one of the samples that sort of looks like this, that's going to be left on the surface for the retrieval mission to collect it afterwards. And so that's where we have our first bad news. The recent recommendation from the Senate has hinted on a potential cancellation of a mission unless NASA finds a way to stay on the budget. And this by itself does not sound very good. It sort of suggests that NASA has a very high chance right now to maybe have this entire mission scrapped in the next few years. And that will be absolutely devastating because quite a lot depends on this particular mission and so many different samples have already been left on the surface. Instead, what the Senate wants to focus on is the Artemis mission with the main point being the Moon. And that's unfortunately the reality of modern space program. It's technically been losing money every single year with the overall cuts increasing in the last decade. You can see here that the budget was practically unlimited during the Moon race and it was also slightly increased during the early 90s but ever since then, it was continuously dropping every year. Now, technically, in numbers, it's increasing, but if you compare this to the total percentage of the federal budget, it's been basically below half percent for the past few years, with the new budget very likely being the lowest yet. Now, chances are NASA is actually going to find a way around this and finds a way to cut some costs somewhere, so this mission is probably not going to get cancelled, but it's still kind of sad to hear that it is a possibility. Anyway, Let's hope that the Martian mission does not stop here. But one of the last things I wanted to talk about is, of course, our beautiful little helicopter that also seems to be on my t-shirt right here that, huh, you can maybe buy in the description below. You don't have to. It does support the channel, but you don't have to. Anyway, recently NASA released a video celebrating 50 flights. It's now conducted 54 flights, but the 53rd flight conducted on July 22nd was supposed to last 136 seconds, but only lasted 74 seconds with a helicopter landing after some sort of an error that was reported on board. And so the recent flight number 54 was really meant to test what's actually happening here and to try to find out if the error might have been fixed. Now a similar error did actually occur approximately two years ago and it was pretty quickly fixed using a software patch, but at the moment it's unclear what caused the new error. Right now the engineers behind the mission think that it's maybe because of the navigational camera being out of sync with inertial measurements that resulted from the helicopter sitting on the surface for several months. But exactly what's happening here and how it's going to be fixed, we're only going to find out about in the next few weeks. Either way though, the mission is still not cancelled and is still going pretty strong. But at least for now, these are some of the major updates about Mars and some of the major discoveries. More mysteries, I guess. Not a lot of answers, but we'll have some answers very soon. On that note, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying that Martian shirt in the description that does help support the channel. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. And intriguingly, right there you see the Perseverance as captured by one of the cameras on the helicopter.